You mentioned Iran-Contra. That, to me, that chapter is the heart of my book because this is a scandal. It begins at the end of 1986, and it threatens to swallow the Reagan presidency. Uh, people who are too young to remember, it involved the United States was found to have been selling arms to this government's enemy, Iran, in exchange for the release of American hostages who were being held in the Middle East. And then the money from those sales was in violation of U.S. law going to the Contra rebels who were fighting the leftist Sandinista government in Nicaragua, all very complicated. When it breaks, Ronald Reagan just Again, optimist, this is all going to work out. I didn't do anything wrong. It is really Nancy Reagan who believes this calls for a complete shakeup of the White House staff, um, starting with the chief of staff. Her husband doesn't want to do it. They go round and round and round about this for weeks. You know, he's like, I'm not going to sacrifice other people just to save my own hide. At one point, he is heard to scream at her, get off my back. Ultimately, she wins. The other thing she does, which is just as important, and I think maybe more important, was bringing Ronald Reagan around to the point where he could admit to the country and admit to himself that he had, in fact, in violation of all of his promises and all of his claims to the contrary, had traded arms for hostages. And in a televised speech, once again, Nancy doesn't trust the West Wing to write this. She brings in her own speechwriter. The president acknowledges this. It is compared to Kennedy's Bay of Pigs speech. The next day, his overnight poll ratings go up nine points because a country that had begun to believe that Ronald Reagan wasn't being straight with them, really gets its confidence back in his integrity.